Here's, of course, a, uh, a young man. He's a bachelor when he goes first. He's about uh, 25 years old. And he isn't um, what Americans expect of a European royal. They expect probably some, somebody like uh, Edward VII, a great big fat man with a beard and medals sparkling upon his chest. And Edward, of course, is not like that at all. He's a slim young man. He's blonde and blue-eyed. He's very good-looking, uh, very modest, um, democratic in manner. He doesn't stand on ceremony. He hates all the, all the pageantry of, uh, of his royal office. Um, so he comes across as a very democratic figure in America. And one of the things, of course, that he loves to do in particular is to go to parties. He's a great party animal. And when he goes, he is naturally, as the Prince of Wales, expected to dance with all the wives of the dignitaries of the, the mayor or the president or the wife of the general or whoever it might be. But in fact, what he does is to seek out the prettiest girls and the best dancers and to spend the night dancing with them. And there's a very good example that takes place actually in the Canal Zone in Panama. He is passing through in a British battleship um, on the way to Australia in 1920 on another Empire tour. But he stops off in the Canal Zone, which is of course American territory, and he's entertained by the American governor. And there is of course a, a reception and a ball held in his honour in the Canal Zone. And at the ball, his, um, his sidekick or his um, uh, secretary, uh, who is Lord Louis Mountbatten, later to be Earl Mountbatten, uh, is deputed to find the, the prettiest and best dancers for the Prince of Wales to, to dance with. And on this occasion, he chooses Caroline Granbury, who is a shop girl. So she works in a drugstore in, in the American zone. She's a, a pretty girl of 19, um, and she's a, a fabulous dancer. And of course, much to the outrage of the assembled matrons, Edward ignores them, and he spends the whole evening dancing with Caroline Granbury. And worse than that, the following night at another party, he makes sure that Caroline is invited, and he dances with her again. Now, you might think this is, this is not a great sensation, but it makes a huge impact in the press in the United States. And Carolyn's picture is portrayed in the newspapers. She's interviewed by the American press, and these stories are printed nationwide from coast to coast in America. And it's very much in the mode of Prince Charming and Cinderella. So the Prince of Wales, Prince Charming, um, finds his Cinderella and, and dances the night away. It's not so well known that Edward is in fact one of uh, Britain's very earliest surfers because f on, on his trip to Australia he crosses the Pacific in the, uh, the battleship that he's on, the HMS Renown, and they stop for refueling at Hawaii, which of then of course is one of the most remote spots in the world. But it is of course the, the birthplace of surfing. And Edward, as a young man, he's always up for a new sport, uh, especially a new physical activity. So he tries his hand at surfing on Waikiki Beach and uh, uh, riding in a uh, traditional um, Hawaiian canoe up to catch the, the surf and the great waves. And he does, in fact, manage to, to stand up on a surfboard. There are photographs of him actually standing. And if you go to the um, British Surfing Museum in Devon, you'll, you'll see some examples of that. And he's so, uh, so pleased with himself and he enjoys it so much that he actually makes sure that HMS Renown stops off at Hawaii on the way home for an extra day so he can pack in some more surfing 